Hi, my name is Darius Ibrahimi Fakari, and I'm a Child Neurology Fellow at Boston Children's Hospital, where I lead a research program for adapter protein complex for associated hereditary spastic paraplegia, or AP4HSP for short. In the next few minutes, I would like to tell you about our publication in Brain that details the clinical, radiographic, and molecular features of 156 patients enrolled in our registry. This study was made possible through a collaborative effort of over 50 medical centers worldwide. In this study, we report that all four subtypes of AP4 HSP share a common phenotype, an AP4 deficiency syndrome. Our findings enable clinicians to make this diagnosis, enable counseling of families, and set the stage for future clinical trials. AP4 HSP is a group of four different forms of childhood onset hereditary spastic paraplegia. This includes SPG47, SPG50, SPG51, and SPG52. Our research program started with the encounter of two patients in our neurology clinic that at the time were only the ninth and tenth patient known to have SPG47. This led to the creation of a foundation called QRAP4 and to our comprehensive research program. In our paper, we report a cross-sectional analysis of 156 patients. 40% of our patients were female. SPG50 and SPG47 accounted for the majority of cases. The average age of diagnosis was about 10 years, indicating a significant delay in diagnosis. Clinical features were assessed using a standardized questionnaire developed for the purpose of this study. Most patients presented to medical attention because of early onset developmental delay. We found that 60% of patients never achieved independent walking and 50% remained nonverbal. Progressive spasticity is perhaps the most defining feature of this condition. Spasticity usually starts in the legs, leading to spastic diplegia at an average age of eight years. This progresses to spastic tetraplegia in late childhood or adolescence. Along with spasticity, we observe pyramidal signs and associated complications in a similar distribution. Extrapyramidal movement disorders are found in a subset of patients, including dystonia, and cerebellar signs are found, including ataxia. Seizures were common in our cohort and mainly occurred in the first three years of life. About two-thirds of patients met diagnostic criteria for epilepsy, and about a third of these patients had medically refractory epilepsy. Interestingly, except in patients with early onset medically refractory epilepsy, seizures tended to become less frequent over time, and many patients were able to discontinue treatment. We reviewed brain imaging data from over 100 patients and found that 90% had a thin corpus callosum, mainly affecting the posterior parts. Other common findings included ventricular megaly, often in the form of asymmetric corpocephaly, which indicates a loss of white matter from the periventricular region. Other interesting observations included three patients with perisylvian polymicrogyria and four patients with evidence of iron deposition in the basal ganglia. The true association of these findings with AP4-HSP remains to be established in future studies. The molecular spectrum included over 75 unique variants. The majority of these were frame-shifting on nonsense mutations predicted to result in a truncated protein. These are described in detail in our paper. To assess disease severity, we employed several rating scales. We found that spastic paraplegia rating scale scores and motor disability correlated with disease duration. Of note, we detected higher SBRS scores in individuals with epilepsy, a finding that could not be explained by a difference in age. This indicates that the presence of epilepsy, which mainly manifests in the first few years of life, is a prognostic indicator for later motor complications. In summary, we define a core set of clinical features, delineate disease progression across the age spectrum, and explore genotype-phenotype correlations. Our results suggest that children with developmental delay, microcephaly, seizures, spasticity, and a thin corpus callosum should undergo evaluation for AP4-HSP. By extending the current study into a longitudinal natural history study, we hope to understand disease progression and to define endpoints for clinical trials. Thank you for listening, and please refer to our paper for additional details.